I hope you all tried to come up with a logic for updating the Excel file with the result. I also promise that I will show you the logic what I'm using and I have the solution ready here. Before we dive deep into it, let me give you an overview of the logic that I've used. So we know that when this loop gets completed, the output collection will be filled with all the items and their corresponding results this computer has processed. Similarly, in the other computer also, which is computer 2, it will have the output collection ready with all the items that computer has processed. Now I have created this update Excel page which will handle the task of consolidating the data in the output collection of all the machines, sort them with the S number field in ascending order and fill it in sheet 1 of the currency exercise file. So let's see how this works. First in the main page I have added a stage to close the workbook as soon as the items are added into the queue. This way the Excel file is not being held by one bot until the end. Next I have added a sleep stage of 5 seconds between this decision stage and launch stage. This is to ensure that this bot doesn't reach the get next item stage before the first bot adds the items to the queue. So we are giving a wait time of 5 seconds. Now if you are wondering how I added a sleep stage, it's very simple. You can add a sleep stage by using the utility general business object and it has this action called sleep. Then in the case of an exception I have added a decision state to check if the attempt number is equal to 3 before it appends to the collection. Because if you remember from video work queues part 3, the maximum number of retries we have set is 3. We are doing this in order to ensure that there are no duplicate entries for the same record when an exception occurs. We discussed this solution in the video work queues part 3 so if you don't follow what I'm talking about please watch the video and that should clarify. I've given the link to that video in the description below. Then I deleted the two stages update excel and save and close workbook. Instead I have added a new page stage called update excel which points to the update excel page. Once all the items are completed in this loop, we will have the output collection which is basically the consolidated list of items and their outputs that this computer has processed. We will send this output collection as an input for this update excel page. Now let's see what's happening inside the update excel page. If I have to explain it in a high level in this page, the bot basically opens the excel file, updates the output collection into another temporary sheet and once all the bots have completed updating the temporary sheet, the last bot will sort the excel and copy paste the data into sheet 1 which is the original sheet. After that the temporary sheet is deleted. Ok, now let's see what happens step by step in this page. First I have added an acquire lock stage. This is to ensure that only one bot opens and updates the excel file at a time. So if the bot is not able to acquire the lock, it will simply sleep for 5 seconds and checks again. This loop will go on indefinitely to ensure that the bot will acquire the lock at any cost. Once it acquires the lock, it proceeds further to create an Excel instance which is to open the currency exercise Excel file. Once it opens the file, it will check if a sheet named temp exists. So obviously the temp worksheet will not exist when the first bot checks because we haven't created this worksheet yet. So as the sheet does not exist, it will take the no path which then goes to the stage for creating the sheet. Once the sheet is created, then the cells A1, B1, C1 and D1 which are basically the headers will be filled with S number, currency, amount and INR which are exactly the same as in our original sheet 1. Basically we are trying to set the same header in the new temp sheet which the bot just created. In case of the temp sheet exists then it will simply activate that sheet. That's what I have written in this go to temp sheet stage. After that it will find the last used row of the temp sheet using the get number of rows action. The get number of rows basically returns the last used row in an excel worksheet. So for the first bot which created this temp sheet and set the header, the last used row will always be 1 because only the first row which is the header is populated. Next we will update the output collection starting from the row just below the last used row. So 
that's what I've given here if you look at the cell reference I'll open the expression you can see it is a concatenated to the last row plus one which means if the last row is one then it will be a2 because we are adding one to the last row which means the output collection will be added from this cell onwards now what happens when the second bot comes it will check if the temp sheet exists if it exists it will check what the last row is let's say that the first bot filled four items then the last used row will be the fifth row as the first row is the header then the output collection from the second bot will be pasted from A6 next it will again check for the last row to find out what the last row is after the output collection was pasted then it will check the last row number of sheet 1 now if the last row number of sheet 1 and the last row number of temp sheet are the same it means all the items have been processed and there are no more items left so that's why I have used this decision stage to check if the last row of sheet 1 and last row of temp sheet matches if it matches then the temp sheet is taken into a new collection called temp sheet then it is sorted with the S number field then this new sorted collection is written back to sheet 1 starting from cell A2 which means it will overwrite the existing data on sheet 1 then the temp sheet is deleted and the workbook is saved and closed let's say if the last row of the temp sheet doesn't match with the last row of sheet 1 it means that there are still few more items to be added to the temp sheet which is probably done by the next bot so we will simply save and close the workbook and the lock is released and the page will end. Alright, so that is all about the logic that I have implemented. This may not be the perfect solution. Some of you may have a much better solution than this. If yes, please feel free to share it in the comments below. I also would like to share my code to you all. So I have uploaded the process and object files to Google Drive and have posted the link below in the description which you can use to import and see what, ha what happens. Alright, so let's go ahead and run this process on two computers from the control room. Before that, let's open the currency exercise file. And here we have only four records. Let's add few more records because we are going to run this process on two computers. All right, now we have seven records. So I will save and close the file. Then I will go to the control room and from the available resources, I'll select both the computers, drag and drop them into the currency conversion W key process. And you can see they have appeared below. Now I will select both the sessions and click start selection. And you can see both the bots have started processing. Alright, now if I go to the control room, you can see that the process has been completed on both the sessions. And if I open the currency exercise file, you can see that the output is updated. Then if I go to the control room, you can see the name of the resource which processed each item. Also note that this is just a computer name and it doesn't have that underscore debug at the end because we ran it from the control room and not the process studio. Now let's go to session management and check for the log of each of these resources. So I'll first right click win 7 bp prod 1 and click view log and you can see one record for each stage that was executed for each record it shows the stage name stage type and if the stage type is an action what object it has used and in what action it was used it also shows the result the result type the start time end time and parameters which is basically the input of that stage so just go through this log and try to understand what is in there we will discuss more about logs in the future videos reading and understanding log is extremely important when it comes to troubleshooting the bot 
Alright, so that is it for this video. We will continue in the next video. Thank you for watching.